When it comes to the water pressure in our galley, we've tried everything to improve it. We've changed up the pump, which made things a little better. We've changed part of the systems to PEX, which made things a little better, but there's still not the water pressure there should be, and it doesn't respond to the pump, and the pump doesn't respond to it the way they should. So we've done a little bit of research, and we realized that we've always had this accumulator attached in between those, you know, the sink and the pump, and now that we read up on it, we actually have a pump that makes that unnecessary. In fact, the accumulator has been hurting the way our pump responds to our faucet. So today we're trying to remove it, and so it's removing yet another set out of, uh, another piece out of our uh, faucet system. And now we look into the magical box of the PEX, and we see if we find the piece that we need, which I think is this one um, to make our life a little easier, but we'll see. <laughs> so the re uh, removal of the accumulator didn't do anything. Um, the galley faucet was still sort of dripping water down instead of the full force it should be. We've changed basically everything, and so we were getting a little frustrated, so we thought, well, the only thing left over is the actual faucet, so why don't we start to take pieces apart and see if it's a problem? And I took this off, and sure enough, it is completely blocked with stuff. And I don't know why, but there's stuff. And now it works beautifully. And <sighs> the problem is solved. But we had checked the original pump separately and it still was not working properly. We had checked the accumulator and the accumulator is not necessary for our system. So, and we wanted to change the pecs anyway. So we've done nothing unnecessary, but the actual faucet pressure issue has been this from, I guess like the third day we installed it, which <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's boat projects, uh, boat problems. <laughs> Sometimes the solution is easier than you think. We are sailing back to Montauk and in, oh, right now it's spiking up to 10, but we're averaging about eight knots of wind. Uh, well, we were not averaging around four knots over ground. There we go. So doing pretty well with the wind. We, for once, don't have a rush to get anywhere before nightfall. So we are just taking it nice and slow. We've got the sails up and are just taking it Taking a bit of a rest today and enjoying the nice little sail. Of course, Spandana is off over there, enjoying her book. Her audiobook, of course. Do you hear that sound? It's not the sound of our motor because it's off and we are not that far from our destination so we're very happy that we are getting more comfortable just sailing more and more of the way there um, getting closer into the wind and not relying on the engine as much um, and it feels feels really good not to have the uh, that sound and the roaring of the engine all the time um, so yeah we're gonna get a little bit closer to the entrance to Montauk and then put the sails down and finish it off with the motor but it's been a very peaceful day with all the sailing we've done. I think Montauk is skipped by a lot of sailors because the entrance looks scary and I remember the first time we did this, it really looked stressful. It, even now I'm, I'm sort of constantly watching my back, but it's really not that bad. And once you get in, it's such a big anchorage that it's such a nice protected spot to be in between Block Island and let's say something Port Washington if you're making your journey south and it's just such a peaceful place to be but I think it's a uh, it's a bit of a hidden gem still so well, I'm excited to be here finally well we made it to Montauk and it is once again a beautiful quiet anchorage we've covered up the instrument panel put the covers on it vacuumed the floor because there were about 
50 dead bugs all over that were attacking us the whole way here from Block Island, and our electric zapper came in handy a lot. I was so just we... making sure there weren't more around us right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, vacuumed all that nastiness up, put the nice rug down, cleaned up the cockpit overall. We're going to have some nice dinner and... We already know this anchorage. We know exactly what it's going to be like and the next few days um, have pretty bad weather coming up so we feel pretty comfortable riding that those storms out here. So yeah it's very shallow. We were able to get a lot of uh, scope on our anchor down um, which means that we are very well dug in. We are going to anchor watch for the next few hours while we have dinner and uh, yeah hopefully tomorrow and the next couple of days should be uh, easier to ride out here. And also we get jelly donuts. I was going to say, anybody who's watched our videos knows knows why we are here. Jelly-filled croissants, I mean. <laughs> yes, <it does. laughs> so we'll find some time in between the storms to get into town and get some more of those uh, desserts and also just spend some time here enjoying the peace and quiet of uh, Lake Montauk. There's a lot of colors I don't know where to go One thing about living on a boat is you have to get used to waking up sometimes to just the sound of Huge rain and thunderstorm uh, exploding all around you. And lightning strikes in the distance and the sound of thunder kind of rousing you from your sleep. I think we're well protected here for the turtle, but definitely, uh, definitely a wake up call. Uh, sun's coming up in about 30 minutes. So we'll just ride this out and then have a nice breakfast. Well, the sun is up, I think, and the lightning has stopped, but the storm is here. This is exactly why we came to Montauk to hide out from the storm, so it didn't really catch us by surprise, but now starts the uh, dragging watch. There are a lot of voices drowning in the sea. There's too many voices talking back at me. There is a big storm uh, right outside of Montauk, and actually, I guess, outside of the entire New England area, uh, spinning around in the Atlantic Ocean. So, we've been getting a lot of wind for the past few days. Um, we've been fine on anchor and, and we've been hanging out. We've made some food for today. Uh, we were looking at kind of the forecast, and um, I guess it's what happens towards the end of the year here in the uh, Northeast that just seems like storm after storm is coming. So we've decided to head out today, even though it's still a little bit windy. Um, there's not really a lot of great stops on the way there, um, or at least the places we might want to stop, it would be arriving very late at night. So we decided to just sail through the night. Uh, it's noon now, the tides are with us, the wind is okay. We might be able to do a, a decent sail. Um, so yeah, we're gonna head out now, um, even though it, it is kind of, more windy, it's about 20 knots uh, gusting to. Um, so that's more than we, we normally would go out in, but we figured we should try it out and, and gonna get used to kind of rougher weather once in a while. And also it just, we, we've been here for a few days now and uh, the weather just continues to be pretty rough. So we're gonna go for it. Um, if it is too bad, we'll, we'll maybe just turn around, but uh, we'll take a shot and uh, head out of Montauk and probably head straight to Port Washington. Not as bad as it could be so you know i think this is comfortable enough for us to go for the next 20 hours to uh port washington and uh hopefully after we make it past plum gut it might calm down a little bit as well so we got both sails up we just turned off the engine uh in 15 knots of wind we're only doing five because the current's against us but uh but we also have the, the sails super uh super reefed 
uh, and thin so that we um, don't get overpowered by the wind. Uh, and uh, yeah, we will continue on like this. We have a bit of a situation. Unfortunately, when we are navigating at night, we need to have either our navigation lights on and our steaming lights on. That's these two switches here. Or if we're sailing, we use our tricolor light, which is here. Uh, we discovered that when we turn on our nav light, this switch is supposed to stay to the left and it keeps switching off immediately. And our tricolor light, okay, well, that wasn't working before. I'm not sure why it suddenly started working now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that wasn't working either. <laughs> well, it just started working. So I, I will try to figure out why that started working, but still the nav lights are an issue. So we are gonna try to figure out what's wrong with that. In the meantime, Spunnerna came up with a great solution for how to make sure our nav lights uh, don't uh, immediately, oh, sorry, how to make sure that we actually have something that we can navigate with. Uh, while our nav lights panel isn't working. Yeah. So Spandana's plan was to basically use our dinghy lights. We have, uh, well, there's three lights we need to show. There is a red and a green, and we need to show on the back of our boat a white light. So what she came up with is we are going to take the this red and green over here. We're going to put this and tape it to the front of the boat. Uh, and we're going to take the nav light and just put it onto the dinghy because it's on the back of the boat and that will basically be the nav lights that we need to have. So it's going to look something like that, um, if that was a boat. So that will be the correct lighting that we need for the um, uh, this nighttime passage. So uh, yeah, that should tide us over until we get to our next destination. Ah, oh, we made it. <laughs> I can't believe we made it in at 3.30 in the morning, which was three hours earlier than we'd expected because we were making seven, eight knots the whole time we were going. And it was amazing. But yeah, getting in here in pitch darkness um, with just some anchor lights and a little bit of harbor lights on, we moored, we found the mooring ball, we moored and it was all done whispering and with no yelling, no boat hooks lost. And it just shows how far we've come in just a few months and just our confidence in these things. And it's just always boggles my mind, but we are here, we're going to sleep and we're gonna spend the rest of the day uh, traveling to family and picking up all the billion packages we ordered to their place and just sort of settling in for a day or two before we make our next jump. We've tracked down the issue. The wire that actually connects to the stern light was running inside of the, um, the solid steel lifelines that we have. Well, not solid, they're, they're hollow in the middle. So the wire is running inside of it and somewhere along the way, uh, that wire broke. So whenever it touches the metal, it causes the entire thing to short. So we've cut the wire on both ends. We're gonna run a new wire between it. We actually uh, looked inside of the old stern light and it's, it's just not in good condition. So we bought a new LED one uh, so we're going to set this one up in the same spot, run a new wire to it, and we'll have a working stern light now. Well, stern light again. We picked up a lot of exciting uh, packages from Dave's parents' house, but two very exciting products that we picked up um, were one was a Dometic freezer and the other is a washing machine. And I am very excited for both of them to be, uh, to see if they work with the boat. The Dometic seems to be working really beautifully. It only draws about 0.5 amps and we stocked up about a week's worth of food in there so far. We'll see how it goes, but there's plenty of room left over. And when we have a few pieces of laundry to do, we'll see how the washing machine works out. Okay, everything is strapped down. Everything is put away and we are ready to start the next hop in this journey down to Annapolis. And this is especially exciting because we are leaving 
at dusk, basically, almost sunset, and we are going to hit New York City at night. So we get to see her lights and bright, bright lights, city lights at night before we say our final, final goodbye to her. So it's going to be really, really exciting. And then the hope is to go all the way down to Atlantic City. So it'll be another 24 hours for us. So let's hope we can sail some of it, which would be really exciting. Sometimes I make this life thing harder than it needs to be Not dead yet, true shit So why do I worry about what I can see? I've been stressing about money for my rent But the money that I spent last night with my friends was worth it Sometimes make this life thing harder than it needs to be so many lights 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 with us tonight night night don't let them go to waste look into my I see it, I see it. Oh, oh wow. This is in front of us. And that is behind us. Hopefully we can outrun the rain, but it's not even time to turn yet, so we'll see how it goes. Okay, we've got about an hour and a half left here on the Atlantic. And of course, just as we're about to run into Cape May, the sky got very dark and rain is now falling. Um, so far the waves are not picking up. The wind is a little bit, but uh, hopefully we can last it through for another hour or so, make the turn into Cape May and things will calm down. Unfortunately, I think we'll be running with the storm, so we're gonna have a lot of rain for the next, uh, I don't know, eight or nine hours. But it's all part of sailing. All right, it's two o'clock in the morning and we're entering the CND Canal.